The number of confirmed deaths has passed 200. The governor has called a state of emergency. Hundreds and hundreds of miles. Hello there, Sarah from 17 once again. This is The Last of Us. This is my Survivor Difficulty video walkthrough. We're on the quarantine zone. This is the second section to the first chapter and is entitled Outside. So here is where we're going to be picking up our trusty backpack, the thing you're going to be wearing for the duration of the game. And this is just another insight to just the interesting way that the mechanics and the functions of, of The Last of Us come together. So you're given a gas mask, you're given a flashlight, and you're given a pistol. Now the pistol is something you're going to carry for the rest of the game. It's not the most accurate weapon, but it's going to pull you out of some jams if you need to use it. And the first thing that I have to explain here is, uh, well, firstly, I have the brightness of this game at this moment in time set to max. And I did that for the, the benefit of the guide, because this is an, a very dark game. And the videos are even more dark. They really are. They are very, very dark. So I've upped the brightness to max. It makes the game a lot easier, I found. And it also helps you, you people see what, what's happening on the screen. On my first playthrough on hard, I did not mess with the... With the um, with the brightness at all, so it was on the base brightness, and it definitely adds to the just the challenge and the atmosphere. Because you, there are some areas of the game you can't see a damn thing. There's a few areas where you, you know you, you're in the face of the the enemies before you've seen them, and it can definitely pay off for the the scares of it, for the tension, and all the the other fantastic things that this game manages to build without it being you know cheap or overly gamey. But for the purposes of, of just pure efficiency, if you want an easier time, knock the brightness up. That is the first tip I will give to people. So, survivor mode. A lot of people have asked me, how do you unlock survivor mode? Well, you've got to beat the game first. I don't know if you have to beat it on hard. That's what I did. But I assume it's just play the game, unlock survivor mode. And when you choose survivor mode, what exactly does that mean? So, the obvious one is, is quite obvious. Loot items and things that you salvage, be them the upgrade points, the, the weapon upgrade points, just the supplies themselves are going to be extremely scarce. There is going to be a lot less, a lot less resources, a lot less supplies. And I played on hard and it was quite scarce on hard, but I, I tended to find myself with, with more than I needed in, in my way of playing. Like, I always had max med packs, I always had max molotovs, max bombs, stuff like that. The ammo was was always kind of low, but for everything else, I had enough materials to make things all the time. That is not the case on survivor mode. On survivor mode, you will barely have the materials unless you're finding absolutely everything. And even then, it's a choice, because you're not going to be able to have everything. So the loot, I, I can't even get across how much scarcer it is, so just... You know, take your time, try and find things, and just manage your, your equipment well if you can. The second thing is you take less damage, obviously. You get beat up because the enemies are stronger. The enemies themselves seem to take a little bit more punishment as well, I've noticed. It's not too much of a disparity from hard, but it's still noticeable. Uh, this is the first enemy encounter coming up. We're going to be moving past some runners, which are the standard infected enemy type. And this is the first part where you're going to notice the difference from hard to survivor. Because sneaking works differently. So on hard, there's only one enemy that you can't crouch up to and, and take out without it seeing you. That is a clicker. A clicker is an enemy that is blind but can see through a sonar technique that bats use. And it's an instant kill on every difficulty. It's a lethal enemy that you need to keep away from yourself. Unless you've got a shiv and the means to use it. Uh, this guy right here, you can shoot him if you want to. I did my first time through because I'm a nice guy. Uh, on this mode, I'm keeping every bullet I can, so I ignore him and leave him to die, which is not cool, but there you go. The future's a, a tough place. So, anyhow, back to what I was saying. The clickers were the only enemies you couldn't sneak past that way because they could hear you. And the game teaches you to lightly brush the analog forward to do an extra slow crouch walk, which is the quietest you can be on the game. And I thought, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of lightly touching the analogs, especially the PlayStation analogs, because they bloody wobble everywhere. So I'm not... That, to me, is not the most fun of a mechanic, but I understood it, it made sense. On this difficulty, 
that works with everyone. You cannot crouch and walk up to enemies at normal speed because they will turn around and you will have to fight them. So watch this here. This guy, I think, I managed to, to sneak up on quite successfully, but that took a handful of tries. You have to go slightly slower than you want to because if you go at a brisk pace, they're going to hear you. And you're going to see it here. These two enemies in this room, on hard mode, if you're crouched, you can walk past these guys, no problem whatsoever. This difficulty, if you do a normal crouch pace, they will both see you and it's it's showtime, it's time to fight. And you don't really want to do it unless you're going for some kind of, you know, kill every enemy run. Or you want the full experience of, you know, let's kill everything, try and get as much loot as we can. So, stealth is viable but the game is not developed in such a way where you can get through all of it without being seen. That's just not how the game plays. And on my first playthrough, I tried to force it. I tried to not use any weapons, not kill anything, stealth past everything. And it doesn't work, guys. And there's a few moments where I was calling bullshit, because I would stealth past everybody, nobody would be around, and I'd walk through a doorway, I would trip a tripwire, and an alarm would go off, and people would be in my face, and I'd be fighting, and shit would go directly to the fan, and I didn't understand why. And it's just literally how the game works. There are certain moments where you will set off alarms. It's triggered. It's a mandatory event. And the moment you stop approaching every scenario like you can avoid it is the moment that the game becomes, for me personally, a lot more fun and a lot more doable. Because this game, to me, is that it's most fun when it's rough. When it's, you know, frayed around the edges. When you're you know, you've lost some life, there's enemies around you, your, your, your melee items seen better days and you're using it to plow the head in of one guy and then you've got a single bullet left and you know somebody else is in the room. You know, the desperation factor is something that makes this game so much more thrilling than your average survival horror or your average third person shooter. And if you're wondering just then, I stood up, I got the attention of both the runners, so I did have to kill them. To avoid this, just keep crouched, they will not hear you. I've made a mistake, and this, if anything, proves that this difficulty is kind of crazy with the detection. But that is the second thing that I would say is, is a valid tactic. Try to stealth an area if you want to save ammunition, because sometimes it can be the best way. But if it's just not working, feel free to kill some enemies, feel free to take them out. Always try and prioritise... You know, uh, strangling them if you can just to save your resources because bullets are going to be on low amount so it means you've got to make every shot count and the aiming in this game is is just like Uncharted it's it's not bad but it's not good and it's it's not you know the top tier aiming systems in games but I actually think it works a lot better for this title because it adds to the desperation it adds to the you know the survivor mentality on Uncharted, it just frustrated me when I put the cursor on people and it, the bullet didn't go where I wanted it to. This game is, is better, but it's, you know, Naughty Dog, for all their intents and stuff, the shooting is not the best aspect of their games, I've never believed. But this, this section here is a bit of a puzzle. You're going to have to get used to the concept of finding things in the environment to make paths, to make bridges, to help you get a leg up to the next environment. It's nothing too strenuous. Sometimes they're a little bit more hidden than others. But for the most, these are little interludes in between the combat, in between the exposition, and it all adds to the pacing of the game because this game has some fantastic pacing. They, they really... You know, outdid themselves. There's a couple of moments where I, I wish they'd have committed more to it, but I also appreciate that there's the you know ADD culture that we live in, where if you're not shooting something every ten minutes, people turn it off. And uh, I'll probably talk about that later on when we get the longer videos. But for this moment in time, it's just going to be a little tutorial on on this difficulty and on what's going to be happening. So upgrade wise. The upgrades don't really matter, I don't think. I was a little bit disappointed in the, the breadth of the upgrades. It's all down to preference. On my first playthrough, I went for the shiv and then never used the shivs. So on this playthrough, I'm going to go nothing but guns. I'm not going to be using any health packs aside from, I think, one of the mandatory encounters which makes you use it. That is a, a self-imposed restriction because I want it to be a struggle. I want it to be, you know, gruffer and... and and just more visceral, because this game is 
there are moments in my playthrough so far that you're going to see in these videos or in the uncommentated, you know, full versions that I'm going to be uploading, where it, it is so... It's just real. It feels so real. It feels like a struggle. And, like, the tension is great. And it reminds me of playing Hide and Kid as a... As Hide and Kid? I've just confused that sentence like a motherfucker. Hide and Seek as a kid, you know? There was no consequence to getting found, but if you were as competitive as I was... My heart used to beat like a bastard when I was hiding. I used to, you know... It was as if the police were trying to find me and they would shoot me on sight, even though it was one of my best friends and it was just, you know, you're on, it's your turn to go and count and everything. But there are moments of this game that remind me of just that pure primal, you know, fear. And I haven't had that for a long time in, in, in a game like this, outside of perhaps the stealth genre, so it's... It's so good. I'm, I'm having a lot of fun. And hopefully you watching this will have a lot of fun as well. So thanks for taking the time. And you take care now.